So we've chosen our band book title. I'm going to use do a light in the attic. I have kind of an idea of what I want, and then I'm limited by these options in this emoji maker, these kind of flat graphic icons. And I've chosen a background, I've chosen eyes, I've chosen a mouth, I've chosen eyebrows. Now I'm seeing if there's something that can kind of suggest a house on top of the head. Let's see, these Z's are kind of interesting. Maybe this party hat. <laughs> and I don't get to move them. I don't get to like make that into an attic or the top of a, a roof. Yeah, and I think that's about it. So this is the closest I can get, right? But it might give me some interesting ideas. Now I'm going to save it. So I can save it in two ways. They both work. You can remember, like it says in the directions, uh, how to do a screen grab, right? And you can do a screen grab of it. And just get it right away. So this was the demo one I did. Just screen grabbing it. So to screen grab it, I would just hit, I'd make it as large as I can on the screen. Because they're vector shapes, notice, no matter how much I zoom in, they're perfectly clean. Just like type design. But I'll make it about this big so it has the same background behind it. And then I'm going to hit Command Shift 4. And then this is a targeted screen grab. Draw a box around it. Always good to practice that. That will go to the desktop as a PNG file. The other way I can do it, Command minus to kind of zoom out, get to a, you know, a basic 100%. I can export it in the upper right-hand corner. And it gives me two options. I can download it as a PNG. And I can download it as an SVG. So SVG is a file format we need to know just because it's very, very old. And it means scalable vector graphic. I want you to download both types because one, they're going to show up in downloads, drag them to your desktop. One is a vector format and one is a raster format. Okay, then because we were just using Photoshop for our last exercise, you're already logged into the Adobe Cloud. I'm going to drag these into my folder, just to be really clear, and I'm going to find the screenshot I did. We really only need one of these to go on to the next step, which is to bring this into Photoshop and start building it up with vector shapes. But let's understand the difference between them. I like the screenshot because it gives me some space to work with. It's pretty clean. Though when you do a screenshot, it turns vectors into pixel-based raster images. The download of the PNG has empty space around it. Remember we talked about the difference between PNGs and JPEGs. So the background isn't filled in with white. But notice that the file cuts off right where the last pixel cuts off. So it doesn't give me a lot of comfortable space around it. And if you actually compare the screen grab resolution to the PNG resolution that you download, the screen grab resolution is better. That's because a vector can be any resolution you want. And the resolution that they save it at under export, just coded into the site, is only 320 pixels which if you look at it in inches at standard screen resolution is only four and a half inches by four and a half inches. Whereas my screen grab, how could this be? It's the exact same file, is 569 pixels, right? And that's because this is not a pixel-based image. This is a vector image. So it can be any resolution we want. So to really understand that, so that's why a screen grab's a little better quality than exporting the PNG. But either one works because this is just a sketch. But now let's compare that, that pixel-based image, to the vector itself, which is the SVG. So if you double-click on the SVG, it will open up in our Adobe Vector program, which is not Photoshop. It is Adobe Illustrator. And we are not using Illustrator for this project. We will be using it starting around the midterm to make logos. But we are using the vector tools within Photoshop 
to get introduced to vectors before we start building them in, in Illustrator. So this looks very similar to what we were looking at, especially to that PNG, except when I hover over it, it starts to outline the paths for each shape in a color. And because it's the first layer, that color is going to be blue. What I can do with the move tool at the top is I can click on one and move them out as individual vector shapes. And no matter how big I make them, they will always be perfectly clean. No matter how much I zoom in on their edges, even if they are a curve or a diagonal, I will not see pixel sidestepped edges. I will see only that clean edge of the vector. So vector files are clean at any resolution and infinitely scalable. The problem with the SVG is because we're not building this in a vector program, it's a little burdensome to us. So you can download it for your own interest, and then if you want, you can kind of rearrange the component parts in Illustrator just by using that top tool. So for instance, if I wanted to, to move this blue part a little bit higher up, I can. If I wanted, just like we did warping of shapes for exercise one, I can do those same things with these transform boxes just using that top tool in Illustrator. And I can kind of create something that looks a little bit like an attic. If I want to put certain layers on top of other layers, I can open up the layers and then move the paths on top of each other. But this is not something we need to do. But that's the power of vectors. So what our job is to do is to create it as a vector making our own shapes, not modifying these existing shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and save it and then close Illustrator, right? And you can see now my SVG is very different than, than these others. And instead I'm going to take my screenshot and I'm going to right click and I'm going to open that with the latest version of Adobe Photoshop. And that's as far as we need to go today. But I'm going to go a little bit further, just so if you want to push ahead a little bit and play with this, because you're excited about making your emoji. Oh, wrong one. Uh, the next step, once you've opened it in Photoshop, or Photo P, as it's demonstrated here, is we're going to use the vector shape tools within Photoshop. And they are near the bottom. They're right above the hand tool. So just, they're just shape tools, but these are vector shapes. And if I click on it and hold down, I get all the options. And I'm going to take the biggest shape, which is the circle, and use this ellipse tool to trace one. And this will be perfectly clean. And then I can modify it. If I want it to be a perfect circle, I can hold down Shift while I create it. Now this is a vector shape, but it's within a pixel grid. So before I do this, I want to make my pixel grid bigger. So I go to image size, and I'm going to make it, let's do 10 inches. And then I'm going to force the resolution up to 350. So it's larger than 8 by 10 by 350. And you can see how that takes that vector and makes it really wonky at the edge because we did a screen grab and now we just forced it bigger, which made the computer make up a lot of pixels. But this is just a sketch. Now we're going to make really clean pixels on top of that by using these shape tools. Hold down shift, get a perfect circle, kind of move it into place using the move tool, just like we used for exercise one. Now you'll notice as soon as I use that tool, it gave me a new layer. 
and it's not a smart object. This is what's called a vector layer or a shape layer. You'll see that it's a different kind of layer. It's not pixel based because it's got that little icon in the corner. And what's nice about that is if I want to change the color, all I have to do is double click it and I can pick a different color for it. And any time I can resize it and it will always be perfectly clean. Now that I've done that, I've gotten it started. I've moved through step 4B on the assignment, right? Now I have multiple layers. Now I want to save it as a Photoshop file. So just like we did before, I'm going to say file, save as. I'm going to give it a name starting with my name and then a description. Exercise number two, light in the attic, custom vector emoji. And I'm going to save it to the desktop. Command D to the desktop so I can verify with function F11 that it's really there. I'm going to mark it green. And then I'm going to organize all my files. So now I can close it and it won't warn me because I already saved it. Close Photoshop, quit Photoshop, log out of ACES and move everything into exer my exercise two folder. Move any stray things into my exercise one folder that might be left on my desktop. And I am done for the day, right? And then I move my folder into my documents folder to keep it safe, okay? If I wanna be extra fancy, just while you guys are kind of saving and, and cleaning up, I'm gonna go ahead and review what we did last class with making our icons, right? So I'm gonna open them up, select a perfect square out of the project files, hit Command C to copy, and then I'm gonna name or replace the images of my project files, customize the icons to actually show the project that's contained. So that's not too tough to do, let's see. I'll do this colorful one, but they should be perfect squares. Copy it, go to the folder, swap it out. And do whatever you need to do to get invested in organizing your files. <laughs> it's going to help you later. So for this one, I'll just start with this to remind me what I'm doing. Get a perfect square selection, copy it, then go to my folder, right click, get info, click on the folder icon, and then paste it in, command V, and replace it. So now this is what my class folder looks like. Exercise 0, exercise 1, exercise 2. Exercise 2 is still in progress, so I'm going to mark this with a yellow. These two are done, so I'm going to mark those with green. They're good to go. And this is what we'll work on in Monday's class. All right.